Number 61, integrated concepts. A 75 kilogram cross country skier is climbing a three degree slope at a constant speed of two meters per second and encounters air resistance of 25 newtons. Find his power output for work done against the gravitational force and air resistance. All right, so here's our skier. Um, he or she is going up a three degree slope. Uh, the velocity is two meters per second, but it is constant and therefore the acceleration right is zero. So that might be important. And uh, we need to find the power output, right, for work done against the gravitational force and air resistance. So if we need to um, find power, and given the variables we're given, right, remember we're given a velocity here, it sounds like this equation would fit the bill, right? That the power is equal to the force applied, right, multiplied by the velocity of the object. So I know the velocity, it's two meters per second. Now remember, this velocity is pointing in this direction, right? I'll call that the positive x direction in a second. But what I need to know then is I need to know basically the sum of all the forces in that x direction. Okay, that's my goal. So uh, why don't I create a coordinate system here? Now my coordinate system is going to be at an angle. All right, I want to make the x-axis here parallel with the slope. Okay, so when I draw my uh, set of axes just like I did, this person has a certain weight, right? And that weight is pointing straight down. Let me draw it a little better. The weight is pointing straight down. Okay, so that's the weight. And this component right here that I'm going to draw in yellow is the X component, right, of that person's weight. And this X component of the weight is what would be opposing this velocity, right? So this is the important X component of the weight, all right? So that's one of the forces that I need to take into account because that's what is opposing the velocity. And they also tell me that there is air resistance of 25 Newtons. Now remember, uh, air resistance will oppose the motion. It's kind of like friction, right? So therefore that vector will point to the left here. And that vector, I'll just call it, you know, the force of air resistance or F sub R for just resistance, okay? All right, so now then in order for Right, these forces to balance out, remember there's zero acceleration because the velocity is constant. I know there must be a force pointing in the opposite direction, meaning to the right here, okay, that exactly opposes, I'll call this the applied force, that opposes the wind resistance and that opposes the weight. All right, and remember now I can create my formula that the sum of the forces in the x direction here will equal zero, okay, because there's no acceleration. Right, remember it's usually MA, but if A is zero, what does this whole thing become? Zero. So they fall right that. Now what are the forces in the X direction? Well, I just detailed the three. Let's plug them in though with their signs. So it should be the applied force, which is positive, minus then the weight in the X direction, minus then the force due to wind resistance, right? And that's all equal to zero. And therefore my applied force here will equal just bringing these two terms on over to the right hand side, right? Adding them together, it's going to be the force of wind resistance plus then the weight in the x direction. So the wind resistance they told us, right? It was 25 newtons, so I know that piece. But what would be the weight in the x direction? Well, remember, go back to the triangle here, guys. What's the angle in here? What's this angle? It would be three degrees, right? It's the same as that angle inside there, okay? And so let me draw that now right here. So let me draw right in here. This is going to be three degrees. Okay. All right, great. So now, um, right, and we can, I mean, we can kind of reason, we can kind of reason that out. I mean, if you just think about how I rotated the axes, you know, I, I had to rotate the axes by three degrees. And, and you know, if I had a plumb line here, um, it would be three degrees off from this perpendicular line. You know, but another way to think about it is, you know, this triangle right here, Right, has a right angle right there. Okay, this is three degrees. Therefore, this angle would be 90 minus three, or AKA 87, right, 87. But now you know also that this line and this line are perpendicular to one another. Why? Because I said that my X, my X um, coordinate here is parallel to this. Okay, and this line would then be perpendicular because I created the axis, right? So then you know this angle in here is 90. So if this piece is 87, what's the missing piece in here? It's three degrees, all right? Now, 
Okay, that was a long-winded way to get to three degrees. In any case, how would I find my x-coordinate here of the weight? Remember, you do know the weight of this person because they did tell you the mass, okay? Um, we would have to use sine, correct? So if I set up my trig here, it'd be sine of three degrees is equal to w sub x over the weight, and therefore the w sub x should equal the weight times the sine of three degrees, okay? So now just expanding this a little bit more with the actual values here, I can simply put plug in now 25.0, right? Plus the weight or mg times the sine of three. Okay, now this is the force. This is the applied force. And these are the values now that I'm gonna be plugging into my, let me make a turn up here. That'll be the, those, these will be the values plugged into the force in that equation. Okay, so let's write this out. So we got power now is equal to the force, right? And the force we just detailed down here, right? is gonna be 25.0 plus the mass, 75.0 times gravity of 9.80 times then the sine of three, okay? Close brackets, then multiplied by the velocity now, right, of two meters per second. And that's all we need to do now. So let's just throw it into the calculator. So we have 25, Hold on one second, parenthesis 25 plus 75 times 9.8 times the sine of three, and then that whole thing multiplied by two. So it looks like it comes out to be about 127. So 127, and that is in terms of watts. All right, so that's the power, that is letter A. So let's take a look at letter B. So what average force does he exert backward on the snow to accomplish this? Well, basically, right, the uh, remember Newton's third law that um, the applied force here is really coming from the snow pushing back on him. Okay, so the force this skier applies backward on the snow is equal but opposite to the force that the snow applies to him, and that's the force that's propelling him forward. Okay, so basically, you know, to answer letter B, it's simply just find what F sub A is. And remember, F sub A, the applied force we said before was 25 plus the mass, 75 times gravity, 9.80 times then the uh, sine of three. So this is, just plug it into the calculator, right? I mean, we can basically divide the top answer by two and we should get the same value. So we get 63.5, right? So 63.5, oops, let me, the decimal doesn't look so clear there, 63.5, uh, and that is in terms of now Newtons, okay, since it's force. So that takes care of letter B. And then letter C now, if he continues to exert this force and to experience the same air resistance when he reaches a level area, okay, how long will it take him to reach a velocity of 10 meters per second? All right, so first thing is, um, you know, what is the, uh, force, right, that he is applying. Well, again, he is applying this particular force, right, of 63.5 newtons. The only difference now is that this weight, this X component of the weight doesn't exist anymore. So the only two forces now in the problem are going to be his applied force and the force due to air resistance. And therefore, he will experience now some acceleration, okay? Uh, why? Because he's still keeping... Remember, he wasn't accelerating under these conditions, but now if you take away this weight component and you keep FA constant, now FA is going to uh, be greater than right FR, so therefore you should have, you don't have a zero net force. So you have an acceleration now. So the sum of the forces in the X direction is equal to MAX. So let's actually calculate that acceleration. All right, so F sub A, we, we just found out, right, was 63.5. And we'll subtract from that the force of uh, the wind resistance, which is 25 newtons, okay? That should equal MA, right? So which this is, he's 75 kilograms times A. So A can simply be found by dividing 75 on out of both sides, right? So divide this by 75, 75. Okay, so that would be A. So let's just hold off from calculating that. And let's think about, well, now how can I find the time? Well, we know the initial speed, two meters per second. We know the final speed, 10 meters per second. We just found the acceleration here. So you gotta think back to kinematics. 
right? How does this formula look? Final velocity is equal to the initial velocity plus the acceleration times time, right? So to find time here, what do we need to do? To find the time value, I have to subtract the initial velocity on over and then divide the whole thing by A, right? So time would simply be now the final velocity minus the initial velocity all divided by the acceleration. So plugging this stuff all in now, mm, let me see if I have enough room. Actually, let me just backtrack. I'm gonna to try to make this a little smaller, all right? So I have the time here is going to be equal to the final velocity minus the initial velocity all over A. So the time value here will be final velocity was 10 meters per second. The initial was 2. And now that's all going to be divided by this fraction, right? So this is 63.5 minus 25 all over 75. Sorry for the small handwriting there, guys. So numerator is going to be 8, right? So it's 8 divided by, let's bring in our parentheses now. So we're going to have 63.5 minus 25, and then divide that by 75. Just be careful with all your parentheses there. And it works out to be 15.6 seconds. All right, so the time here is going to be 15.6 seconds. That's how long it will take. All right, guys, thanks so much for tuning in. Please remember to hit that subscribe button. Definitely helps us out tremendously, and it also helps out your uh, fellow classmates as well. All right? So thank you so very much. I appreciate your time. Have a great day.